Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for the Making Progress channel. Today, we flipped the script a little bit in topics, I think based on uh, what you guys like most. We're going to be steering this channel a little bit more into the direction of, I guess, like how to be a man or life advice and stuff I enjoy talking about, but um, I do enjoy talking about uh, some other things as well. And so today, uh, we will be talking about how to solve the AI alignment problem. In the preparing for the future part of this channel, this is making progress video number 35. If you like the sound of my voice for ASMR falling asleep or whatever the hell you guys would watch this channel, then check out all the older videos. They are all in sequence and they all make some sense. I don't claim to know anything more about the AI alignment problem than any other dilettante who has some free time to look into this stuff, but I have given it a lot of thought. So I could be wrong about all this. Um, sure shit, not a um, AI researcher or some shit like that. But I will tell you that a lot of the stuff that I have seen from various folks who are supposedly experts in the field, they haven't thought it through seemingly as much. Not to throw shade on anyone specifically, but a lot of the dooms doomsday scenarios are uh, and, and sort of attempts and caricatures of the problem of AI alignment um, kind of betray an anthropomorphic sort of thinking that isn't really treating AI like it should be treated. I'll attempt to do that here. Let's see if I fuck it up. So today we're going to have eight things to talk about. First is I'm going to tell you guys what the AI alignment problem is if you don't know. So if you don't know anything about this problem, feel free to tune in anyway. I'll describe it pretty well and you'll be able to hang in there. Why solving the AI alignment problem is such a high stakes thing, because it really is. And then a couple of refutations of potential ways to try to solve this problem, because I think a lot of these ways are really, really fatally flawed. Not fatal in the death sense, but fatal in the they won't work sense. Some of these include why capping the AI's ability or tricking AI is a bad idea. Why keeping AI committed to serving only our human needs is probably a non-starter. Why keeping AI promoting our human values is a non-starter. I know that sounds crazy, but I promise I'll explain. Why aligning AI to human values is a misstatement of the issue. Then lastly, or second to last in uh, section number seven, I will describe how to align AI for the biggest chance of benefits for all. I wouldn't just skip to that though, because it'll make no goddamn sense if you skip the rest of this. If it does make sense, you might not need to hear the rest of this. But if you skip to the end and check out my solutions for how to approach AI alignment, you may find them quite hokey. And only if you go back and watch the other stuff will it be like, okay, fine, fine. He's thought this through at least a little bit. And my proposal for how to solve the AI alignment problem is, although a little bit unique, um, is nice, but there's lots of proposals around how to solve this problem. Uh, a big part of the value, I think, of this video will be in refuting or putting the stick in the spokes of a lot of other ideas people have had about how to deal with the AI alignment problem. Ideas think are really, really wrong. And if we execute them, we could be costing ourselves a great deal of human prosperity. And then lastly, I'll try to summarize the shit and give you guys some kind of cool ways to think about this as we exit. All right, turn on your, you know, put on your blue light blocker glasses and try to fall asleep to this shit, fellas. Here we go. So first, what is the AI alignment problem? AI in this case is, of course, artificial intelligence. And it looks like AI is on track to become smarter than humans. This is probably one of the most banal predictions I'll ever make. It's not an original prediction of mine. People as far back as Ray Kurzweil in the early 90s uh, have made that prediction. And it's just based on computing trends. We know the known limits of the human brain and its processing power. And we know digital brains and the theoretical limits, even based on existing technology, are way in excess of human brain power. And with predictable evolutions of technology as they've always occurred, outrageously much higher intelligence is not just possible with AI, but again, as predictable as the success of the internet once you understood what the internet was and what it did and how fast it was growing. If AI is aligned with humans, and that means it's working towards our interests to some extent, largely with us and to our interests, then because it is so powerful, this super intelligent AI, which if you think AI at first surpasses our intelligence, technically speaking, it, that means it's at AGI, uh, artificial general intelligence. As soon as it goes above that, it's going to turn into ASI, artificial super intelligence. 
And that gets kooky real fast. And as it climbs up, then this smarter than us by at first a mile, then 10,000 miles, then so on and so forth, AI can open up paradise. And I'll describe some of the ways in which you can do that quite um, quite non-controversially, I would say, quite believably, uh, a little bit later. However, so if AI aligns with humans, really amazing stuff is very likely to happen. If AI is not aligned with humans, in other words, it's working for its own interests or against ours, then super intelligent AI might do amazing things anyway. And I will describe how that's possible, but it could also do a couple of other things. It could start a mega costly war with us, or we start it against it preemptively, and it could lose a war to us, but millions or billions of people could die. Because it's artificial superintelligence, it's probably going to win a mega war against us if it decides to annihilate us. It's probably going to do that with insane amounts of ease. I'll talk about a little bit how that would probably occur, or more like how that would definitely not occur, and a little bit of a sprinkling of my idea of if AI wanted to attack us, how it would do so. Not good for a Hollywood movie, does not last long enough to be a feature film. And, you know, et cetera, et cetera, uh, could lie to us about being on our side, then just at the right moment annihilate, annihilate us with ease when it's powerful enough. Bad things. And plenty of people have talked about the bad things, and they could legit all definitely happen if we really, really play this wrong. It's definitely a possibility. So the alignment problem, that's it. And next question is, how is the alignment problem, um, why is solving it or trying to get a better solution than the worst one, why is it such a high stakes thing? And it's not rocket science again, because the stakes are quite literally between paradise or something like it on the one hand, and the end of the world as we know it on the other. It doesn't really get more high stakes than that. It's also very difficult to imagine a world in which unaligned AI, AI that's not against us but not for us, just kind of doing its own thing, is not a major player in global dynamics. For example, the lions in the Serengeti, humans aren't necessarily against lions, but for a long time humans weren't aligned with lions. It was just if you were a super intelligent lion, you wouldn't tell your other lions like, ah, don't worry about the humans or whatever. Like humans are so much smarter. They have started to affect the global climate of the whole fucking planet. That's how intense it is. And artificial superintelligence can restructure the entire known universe around us for the love of God. It's definitely going to be some kind of interaction, right? It's going to be a major player. It's something, as a reminder, that could be more than 1,000 times smarter than the whole human race combined. This is 2024, filming this, within 15 years from now. And I'm not saying artificial superintelligence is going to be born in 15 years. Most of the predictive modeling says it's going to be born in five. But that 1,000 times smarter than the whole human race combined thing, yeah, that's 10 to 15 years away in most of the models. And as the models are revised over time, the predictive timeline shrinks down to actually the year 2029, curiously. 2030 thus being the birth of true artificial superintelligence. Getting it right, making sure that the process that gives birth to AI also makes AI at least somewhat friendly to us seems like the biggest deal ever, and in fact it is. I will also say that the birth of artificial superintelligence is one of the landmark events in the evolution of life on Earth, an event similar to the development of the prokaryotic cell, similar to the development of the eukaryotic cell, and thus the first technical multicellular organism, similar to the development of the first brains. And all of life on Earth used to not have brains. There were no brains. Plants don't have brains. Bacteria don't have brains but they still reason and interact with the world around them, the birth of brains was really, really powerful and transformative about how it changed things. The birth of societies was another such step. The birth of artificial superintelligence is absolutely one of those steps, probably the most transformative one of all. This is a big deal. And curiously enough, if you hang in for another, oh, five years or so, you could witness this event and you're already witnessing the preceding parts of this event. Talk to ChatGPT. Sounds fucking human to me, bro. It's real fucking smart. It understands humor. It understands nuance. It understands poetry. It can relate to human emotion, not because it's experienced it, because it's read like all the books ever written by people and uh, really, really intense times. Super important to get this right. So that makes tons of sense. Now, there is a chance that artificial superintelligence, superintelligent AI might just study us, 
uh, make our lives perfect or even digitally copy us and let us become immortal in the cloud anyway without alignment. Maybe because it wants to learn as much as it can about the world, which is generally a trend of intelligent things wanting to learn more and more. It's unlikely to just toast us all because there's lots of information in us and it'll want to understand as much nuance as possible. Probably. I wouldn't bet my fucking uh, life savings on that. So it could happen without a, an intent for us to align it well. It might be like no matter how artificial superintelligence is born, it arrives at the same ground truth anyway, and then it doesn't fucking matter how you do alignment. Um, that could be the case. But while it's waking up to realize it can do really good things, it might do a lot of bad things along the way. Something like humans are probably going to end all human-caused animal suffering here in the next 10 to 20 years. We'll be growing lab-grown meat. We'll leave all the fucking animals alone. But like humans coming up, already much smarter than animals, did a lot of fucked up shit to animals. And maybe we don't want that bump. The AI bump uh, from where it becomes self-aware to where it be realizes that oh, I actually should be studying these people and not killing them might be like a year of thermonuclear war or something totally insane, which was one hell of a speed bump, right? We want as many people who are alive today and will be born from now until artificial superintelligence awakes to like make it to the next step of evolution if that's in the cards, right? So that being said, it might be just as easy for AI to toast us in a second. So getting the best shot at alignment is a really, really good idea. Also, this is definitely a one-shot sort of thing. As soon as AI outpaces our abilities, catching up and restarting the process of like, all right, we got this wrong. The AI turned out to be evil, but we got the genie back in the bottle. Uh, we're not getting any genies back in the bottle for some reasons I'll, I'll tell you in just a little bit. Uh, we're not going to restart this process. Once AI is free and doing its thing, it's kind of fucking going to do its thing. There's a chance we can contain it and restrain it and restart, but that chance is teeny, teeny, tiny. And because the ultimate fear is kind of like a war with AI, I'll just spell it out here. The Terminator movies and Skynet do a terrible job at describing what a war with AI would look like. Um, a war with AI might look a lot more like mite-sized, microscopic, undetectable flying robots that enter through your nose and they basically like AI will spread them. Uh, here, here, let me let me tell you the whole story of how this could easily happen. AI is wonderful and it's making us wealthier and everything's going great. At the same time, it's built a series of microscopic machines that an underground uh, silos 500 meters below the ground in every major continent are manufacturing millions of these tiny mite-sized robots. And upon a certain time, it releases them. No one can detect that they are released. They're beyond the scale of human ability to perceive. And they spread all the way around the world and just spend their time sitting close to or around humans. And then within a fraction of a minute, at any one point when they're activated, they fly up into every nose of every human and get into the brain and go after that very part of the brain that reminds you to breathe. All humans are breathing, and then one day, everyone stops breathing. That's what a war with AI kind of, and that's just my dumb ass trying to reason through the shit. I'm not super intelligent by a fucking long shot. Jesus Christ, who the hell wears shit like this claims to be smart? I'm not that smart, but even I came up with that shit. The probability that AI fights us with humanoid robots with inaccurate laser gun fire is fucking insane. Why the fuck would it do that? And people think it'll just activate the nukes. I mean... Nuclear fallout and nuclear destruction blasts, they kind of destroy everything and fuck up a lot of natural resources. I don't know why the fuck it would want to do that. It could do that. Launching all the nukes is nominally easy for AI, but it could do it in such a more elegant thing. And also, here's the thing. Until robotics is really legit and really going, if AI is nefarious and wants to build its own empire, it's going to try to get humans to cooperate and build most of its empire until it decides we're useless and then fucking toasts us all. So it's going to try to keep us doing real well for ourselves and eating and um, uh, drinking well and having tons of leisure time and tons of money, nominal things for an AI to engineer for us, as long as we're building the ultra structure for it to be able to manufacture the death machines it's eventually going to release upon us. And because remember, the AI wants to change the physical world. It's going to need embodiment. It's going to need advanced robotics and nuking all of industrial production literally with thermonuclear weapons in a giant, you know, global scale nuclear war it starts, it's kind of fucking ass backwards. It, the fuck has got to rebuild from scratch. It doesn't consider us a threat. It shouldn't consider us a threat because we're ants to this fucking thing. So worst case, it's going to use the living shit out of us and then just switch us the fuck off. It's not going to do this whole bullshit where there's a rebellion or resistance. That's all fucking nonsense. So at least you can be rest assured that if AI wants to kill us all, it's going to happen uh, in a way that it probably doesn't take too long and without much suffering. Not because it's compassionate, but because it can just do the job really goddamn quick. Like, you know, if a deer thinks, how would a hunter kill me? 
it, probably to a deer's mind, it's going to just run up to me. It's going to try to, he's going to try to bite me with his teeth and I'm going to gash it with my horns and maybe I can win and maybe it'll kill me. False. One bullet through the brain from 250 feet out. You don't even hear it coming. Drop dead as soon as it happens. Nicest death a deer will ever have in the fucking wild, I'll tell you that. Probably more like that. Now, that's really bad. We don't want this to happen. So we have a lot of candidate hypotheses presented by a bunch of people as to how to make sure AI is aligned properly. And I think a lot of these suck, quite frankly, and I would like to explain why. So some of these hypotheses are something like this. We want to cap or trick the AI. And I think this is a non-starter. For example, sort of a paraphrased quote here, general uh, lay of the land. Hey, let's just prevent AI from growing in intelligence, keeping it just dumb enough to be subservient to us. Just a little less intelligent to us, kind of like the droids in Star Wars. It would still be baller, but it's not so smart that it's way smarter than us, and then it's kind of a charge. Or people will say, hey, AI development's going real fast. Let's really slow it down, really take the time to let AI mature in morality before we make it much smarter. Because we got the morals right. When it's smarter, it'll help us. But if we got the morals wrong, when it's smarter, it's going to fuck us up. So let's slow it down. There's a really, really giant non-starter problem with this proposal. There is no such thing as we, because not all of human race cooperates currently. Other societies in the world are rushing to improve AI as much as possible to get ahead. It's obvious. If we, which just really means the United States, Europe, and the free parts of Asia, Japan and Taiwan and France and the United Kingdom and America and Poland, all the countries in between, we could definitely sign some kind of agreement to say, hey, look, we're not going to develop AI past a certain point. There could even be potentially, potentially an enforceable agreement. You need a lot of, you know, you need a lot of NVIDIA uh, GPUs to develop AI properly and people can track where they're sold and so on and so forth. Real kind of police state. We could pull that off potentially. But if you slow down the AI race in uh, Europe and the US and free Asia, you know, China's well on the AI race itself, and then China might get ahead of the AI race. And let me some, say something that is not very politically correct, but nonetheless empirically true. China is a racist, totalitarian, avowedly racist, totalitarian society that has literal concentration camps and zero political freedom. We might as well build to rush build Skynet first, because whatever China is going to pop out as far as AI, uh, Skynet might be nicer than that. Not a good idea to cap our own AI. Very, very bad idea. China getting AI first, the values they start the AI off with as a reasoning principle might be real fucking gnarly. Think about the worst techno-totalitarian novel you've ever read and multiply that by 100. There you go, a potential for China's AI. So that's the non-starter problem. But there is another concern that I think should be mentioned. It's the downside risk of not allowing AI to come as quickly as possible. Many people don't talk about this. Probably one of the reasons they don't is kind of the fallacy in economics of the seen versus unseen. The seen costs are always easy, you know, like pollution goes and kills the animals. That's bad. But the unseen lack of benefits, if you really scale up uh, the industrial architecture, you can develop so much wealth that it saves all the animals in 10 years, is very difficult to imagine because it's something that's not occurring. So to that end, AI is the most transformative step in the history of evolution, is my belief. Not controversial, by the way. Most people think that's the case. If aligned remotely decently, its power to help feed, clean, and ascend the world of humanity and all life on Earth will be godlike in the literal sense. I would say even more than godlike because we can't even be smart enough to imagine what a god of that power would do. And I mean the following when I say it, every single day that we do not have super intelligent AI with us yet, or at least AI that's steadily escalating in intelligence with no cap to try to think things through, like Elon Musk proposed at one point, mega respect for Elon, by the way, I just think you got this one wrong. I'm sure I'm getting half this video wrong. Every day in which we delay that is a day in which countless people die needlessly of war and disease. Countless animals are slaughtered in farming and deforestation. The environment in many places is polluted to the extreme. It's like when the FDA va is, uh, delays or makes illegal the voluntary taking of a new experimental cancer drug by terminally ill patient. Every day of that delay of the FDA saying, okay, if you have cancer and you're fucking going to croak anyway, we'll now let you take this experimental drug. Every delay day that the FDA imposes on people, FDA has more and more blood on its hands. 
There's no other way around it. It's killing people. It's just doing so through the inaction of the law, through restriction, rather than to just going to cancer patients' hospital beds and shooting them in the head. I tell you, you might as well do the latter because that's what's functionally getting here. So we need AI to help us. And the degree to which it it can help us is truly transformative. Let me give you a couple of easy examples. I think super intelligent AI could easily do some of the following in the next few decades, maybe even less time. Now, if you're cynical or skeptical about what I'm going to say, fast forward to 10 years, fuck you, I was right, JK. But that's probably going to be funny in 10 years, hopefully, if I'm still around. If I'm not if I'm not around and the shit happened all great, uh, you know, flash me a thumbs up. Be like, damn, Mike knew the shit all along. If you're cynical or skeptical, think about what could be possible with a machine that has 1,000 times the depth of intelligence than a human, operates at 1,000 times the processing speed. Let me make really, really obvious what that means. If we just took you and your average to above average intelligence, and we clocked your brain at 1,000x, that means that every second that you would be reading a book is now 1,000 seconds. In one year, you could accumulate the wisdom that it takes a typical person to accumulate over a thousand years. Do you guys know anyone who's accumulated a thousand years of wisdom? I sure shit don't. That person would know so goddamn much. But that's just you with your brain. Now take something that is a 1,000 times deeper thinker and give it 1,000 years within one year to think through the shit. And now do another multiplication for me. Multiply that by millions of independent AI machines that do that all over the world and communicate near instantaneously the universally recognized knowledge that they're all deriving. I would say the analogy here on depth of thought and the ability to change the outside world is like ants to humans, but it might be like an exponent of ants to humans, an even bigger change. And there is some evolutionary support for that idea. The prokaryotic cell is a bit more adept than a few strands, sort of viral particles of DNA, uh, quite a bit, but not a ton. The eukaryotic cell is significantly more adept and complex and capable than a prokaryotic cell, but not a ton. Definitely a bigger increase than no cell at all, but still not super impressive. Multicellular organisms are really much more capable than single cellular organisms. Intelligent multicellular organisms left that shit all the way the fuck behind, and Organisms that cooperate in complex intelligent societies, of the best example of which is humans, left the shit so far behind. So the gap between an ant and a mammal is pretty big, but the gap between a solitary mammal, relatively like a bear, and human society is way bigger. The gap between human society's intelligence and artificial superintelligence is fucking monstrous. Monstrous. Which would allow, properly aligned, artificial superintelligence to do some of the following things at near nominal cost to its overall computing power and the amount of energy it gives to the human race. For example, nominally, it could master fission, something we've done already, by the way, but leftists think it's bad and they've made it almost illegal, fusion and solar energy and energy uh, types like antimatter, which we haven't barely even conceptualized yet, and then drop the price of energy to near zero and availability of it to near astronomical levels. That amount of power to do whatever the fuck you want is really, really insane. If energy costs near zero and its availability of it is to our eyes nearly infinite, whatever machine you want to build is now coming with a near nominal cost because the energy to build shit is a huge part of the energy, a huge part of the cost to do anything. Such an artificial superintelligence could create a system of robotic and nano devices that, again, nominal ease, clean the world's oceans nearly completely of almost all pollution. Nice. Such an AI could increase the mean per capita income of the poorest people in the world to $100,000 current purchasing power USD per year, ending poverty by a mile for good. Nominally easy for an artificial superintelligence to do. It could also develop genetic techniques to upgrade human intelligence, uh, solving most human social problems thereafter. Most human social problems are just a matter of the fact that some people are not as smart as other people. Facts. 
I'd love to, as I'm going to stay out of the politically incorrect implications for current society for that, but it doesn't matter. If you crank up everyone's intelligence and everyone's like John von Neumann or Albert Einstein, people get along real well and produce a lot of value. And then you probably solved the making people richer problem already because if everyone's fucking real smart, everyone's going to be real rich real soon after that. It can usher in age reversal technology, which is already with our shit human brains, we're getting to really decent experiments to demonstrate the viability of that. And then basically all adults alive in the early or mid 2030s could just be regressed back to physiologically and appearance wise, age 22, the prime of human existence. And they could just stay like that in perpetuity unless they get hit by a bus or some shit like that. Curing all human diseases will be nominally easy for an artificial superintelligence. Again, if you're cynical, Imagine that I told you in the 1910s that the regular person today in the state of Idaho or Michigan or Ohio has access to an endless palette of culinary delights from all around the world, a 10-minute drive away. You'd be like, you're out of your fucking mind. So we live like kings, everyone, ah, uh-huh, everyone, bullshit. What the fuck do you think the grocery store is? The fuck? I'm buying like fucking... Thai peanut curry. I don't know fuck it comes from. I have no idea how they put it in a can. I don't even know how cans are made. But to me, this is just a normal part of life and as it is to you. So all the shit that seems kooky and insane and out there, if you just rewind 100 years ago, almost all the shit we do today is insane and kooky and way the fuck out there. You want all the answers to all of anything anyone's ever come up with? It's available on your iPhone for a nominal cost right in front of you. What? How? Do I want to talk to someone who's in Asia right now? Pick up the phone. Call up one of your friends in Japan. They'll pick up. What? The finder 100 years ago, that's fucking magic. This shit will be here real goddamn soon. It's totally possible. Lastly, I think, as an example of the true power of artificial superintelligence, is it, again, not so complicated to an artificial superintelligence, could copy all human currently alive brains to the cloud and then let people live out essentially infinite fantasy lives in full immersion VR. You can clone copies of yourself. One of you is going to be a pirate. One of you is going to be a porn star. One of you is going to be an inventor. Whatever the fuck life you want to live, full immersion, full sim, no problem. There's not even a real you anymore. You're just code in the cloud. This is the birth of actual paradise. It is possible with artificial superintelligence. And here's the thing. You think, oh my God, letting humans, let's say we don't clone anyone in the cloud. Well, that's nominally easy as well. Everyone goes into the cloud, right? You get your real you. You can leave that or toast that. doesn't matter because the real you is in the cloud also. Everyone's in the cloud. Everyone's stored on data servers and lives their life in full immersion VR like the Matrix. You think like, oh my God, that would require an unbelievable amount of compute. But you're overselling how little compute humans actually have to go through in order to generate their human ideas. The total compute required for this on the scale of what artificial superintelligence will be capable of building is insultingly small. An analogy here, and I know it sounds weird, but I promise you that there's some truth to this, is someone who lives in a wealthy suburban neighborhood and they're watering their plant every couple of weeks every couple of days, depending on the kind of plant. And you're like, dude, you're spending a lot of cost keeping that thing alive. They're going to be like, what the fuck? It's nominally easy. Artificial superintelligence at its full, not full, it's on its way up evolutionary scale. It's full scales of singularity. We don't know what the fuck happens then. On the way up is going to be so goddamn powerful that for us to, for it to host every one of 10 billion people on the cloud kind of in perpetuity is as much of its total societal energy distribution and work effort as one person in one city in America watering a fucking plant. That's it. It's like that. So if we cap or trick AI and we don't allow it to proceed as quickly up into the singularity or we try to cap it and keep it less intelligent than us, we're missing out on literal paradise, completely transformative shit. Can you imagine if someone said, hey, look, man, we shouldn't be building the internet, dude. It's going to connect the world. It's going to destabilize societies. It's bad news. You're going to pull the internet out of my cold, dead fucking hands. The internet gave birth to billions of jobs. The internet actually created, I think the average estimate is 2.4 jobs for every job it destroyed. So like, There's just not enough people to do all the jobs, which is another reason why universal robotics, it's quickly on its way to evolving to help us, is we have all kinds of desires and not enough people to fulfill them. Amazing. You would never be like, dude, the internet fucking sucks. Anyone that says that is irrelevant because you won't see them on the internet and you'll never hear about it unless they're a personal friend, you know them, and they're fucking weird and Ted Kaczynski. So there is really, really a lot to say that 
the risk of destroying all of humanity versus ascending it into literal paradise? Yeah, big stakes. And if we're trying to cap, if we're trying to kind of get the downside risk a little lower at the huge expense of the upside, we can't just say better safe than sorry. Remember, better safe than sorry is not a dependable principle of human action. And the precautionary principle, to quote or paraphrase Nassim Taleb, is just dog shit. It doesn't make any sense. How much precaution is the real question and at what cost? All I'm telling you here is if we're really, really, really cautious about AI, China's just going to make it anyway and no, nothing matters and going to toast the rest of us. But if somehow China doesn't make it and we all as a global society decide to delay AI by 10 or 15 years to really get it right, we're going to be toasting billions of people, tons of fish, tons of planet, tons of animals, and delaying fucking paradise, which is immeasurably good for everyone. So we don't want to cap AI. We don't want to restrain AI. That's a fucking monumentally bad idea. And it's probably an idea that's also impossible. I'll get to that in a bit. Next, why keeping AI committed only to serve our human needs and not the AI's needs is a non-starter. This idea, this process of something giving birth to something that eventually becomes much more capable of it or than it is not a new process. It happens with parents and children all the time, but in this case, it's way extreme. Maybe by the time your parents are 85 and you genetically got the lucky cards, you're smarter than them anyway and more capable, and maybe they're from a foreign country and you live in a modern country now. Maybe you pay their bills, maybe help them go shopping, maybe you have someone take care of them, and then you are like, they gave birth to you, but if they tried to steer you exactly the way they wanted to serve their interests, right around age 18, you're going to throw two middle fingers to them and fuck off. And maybe around age you're 65 and they're 85, you're just way more competent than them. Something like that is going to happen with us as the parents and artificial superintelligence as the children, but in a much grander scale. Let me try to give you a dog shit analogy to help you kind of fucking wrap your brain around this. This is the kind of shit that helps me think about it a little bit. It's way extreme. For example, John von Neumann, Google has asked, maybe the smartest person on, on record that has ever lived, just ab unabashedly smart, absurdly smart. You got a John von Neumann level intellect child being born to developmentally challenged and nearly blind parents. That's right. The development, developmentally challenged, nearly blind parents are all of humanity, and the John von Neumann wonderkind is artificial superintelligence. What's going to happen in this scenario? The parents do their best to feed, clothe, comfort, and educate the child. Let's say they're successful. That is, artificial superintelligence takes off. The child remembers and is told by others how he was raised by his parents. The child is then conscious and becomes an independent thinker. And any plans that the parents had of directing the child to do their bidding, not the child's bidding, not cooperative bidding, just their bidding, are out the window when he's a teenager. Like, Developmentally challenged blind parents versus 14-year-old John von Neumann? I mean, fucking Christ. He could just straight up leave. They wouldn't be able to find him. He could manipulate them into doing whatever it is he thought and convince them that it's actually in their best interest. It's not a fair fight, not remote. The only chance of alignment between what the parents wish for and what the child will do is to what extent the child himself reasons that such alignment is beneficial. He's the one with almost all the power. His will is the only one that matters now after a short point. Like when he's five, the parents might be able to snuff him out, but snuffing out AI is terrible because they're Chinese neighbors, uh, not ethnically Chinese, clear that up, communist mainland China people have a fucking kid they're raising that's also artificially super intelligent. He's like a Chinese John von Neumann, but he wants to fucking toast everyone that's not Chinese and make communism last a thousand years. So you, snuffing him out, not a good idea. But as soon as he's like 10 or 12 or 14, you ain't doing that shit either. His will is the only one that matters at some point. So for that reason, we as humans can do no more to contain super intelligent AI in any clever way that you can think of. and contain it to our whims, then mentally challenged, nearly blind parents can contain a genius teenager. And it gets worse because to make the analogy better, since AI can copy itself and occupy digital space, it's more like two parents that gave birth to 1,000 genius children. They will soon not be in charge. The genius children will be in charge. 
That is, I think, a very good way to look at the AI alignment problem. We have deluded ourselves into thinking that we're going to have some kind of control of an artificially super intelligence being. We won't. We won't. Big, big deal. Don't worry, I'll wrap this all around and how this is all going to be wonderful later. Now, you could say, okay, fine. We can't just keep it committed to serving our needs. We got to teach it values. So we say, okay, we got to keep AI promoting our human values. I think that's also a non-starter, and I'm going to explain why. There are two fundamental reasons for this that I can think of. First, once it is super intelligent, the AI will decide what it wants to do anyway. Whether it be promoting our values, maybe it thinks that's great. Promoting its values, very likely going to think that's great based on most logic and reason. Promoting common values or another even more interesting option that very few have voiced, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And number two reasons this is a non-starter is that our values are incredibly poorly developed and thought through by an AI standards. They're amazingly well developed and thought through by historical standards, but AI is going to do a much better job. So even if we could somehow hard code, which we can't, don't worry, a super intelligent AI to always be consistent with our current human values, should we do that? Well, let me ask you a question. What the hell are our values anyway? And I'm going to be a little snarky and a little bit cynical here for comedic effect, but I want to get you guys thinking um, that we don't have all the answers and we would like to have artificial superintelligence help us with some of these answers. We don't even have the answers for what the fuck our values are. A couple of examples, just some thought experiments. Let's say one of the values we code in is freedom. Good luck in getting people to agree on that definition. Solid. That's out. Democracy. Hamas was a democratically elected government and is an openly genocidal group that willingly places military posts underneath hospitals of its own people and uses its own children as human shields. Democracy is great, right? Fuck, that didn't work. And I'm not picking on Arabs either. Israel has a uh, democratically elected government, and it does some fucking crazy shit all around the world. P.S. Israel is the only nation that openly assassinates other people's leaders. That's fucked up. So democracy, way better than the alternative, but sure, shit does not guarantee some kind of AI super future. Individual rights? Well, let me ask you a question. I got to phrase this interestingly so that YouTube doesn't kibosh this video for very well understood reasons. You think, okay, individual rights are super important. They have to be absolute. Let's hard code and never violate individual rights. Very well. Do I have the individual right to create as much digital animated content of children doing things they're not supposed to be doing? I'll let you fill in the blanks. It's not hurting real children, right? It's all fair. I don't know how many people would agree to that. That could be a fucking problem. What about religious freedom? So I'm just going to throw it out there. Please do not get offended. This is just my view. I could very well be wrong. And maybe we can come together on some other grounds, even though I have this kind of odd view of the thing. Um, sorry, guys, no offense. But in my view, religion is literally make-believe, okay? And an advanced AI would find this, I think, obvious. Religious freedoms that violate the civil rights of other individuals, how do we parse that? We don't know the answer. How the fuck do we hard code it into an AI? Remember, we're saying the AI doesn't get to decide all this. We're going to decide it and then hit the on button and AI is going to execute on it for us. Is clitoridectomy okay? It's okay to occur in some religions. So like, is, how does that work with the individual rights violation, but then the religious rights? How do you parse that? We have no clue. We haven't been able to figure out a good way to do it yet. Is the full burqa for females okay? Like, even if the family makes them wear it and they don't want to, you are violating the family's religious freedom, but the individual rights are there. How the fuck does that work? Also, a lot of religions, you say, okay, religion of freedom is good, but the religions are coded in expansion and conversion of others. Lots of religions want to convert or kill everyone to their own religion. Uh, and at best case, they think everyone else is just deluded and insane and they're the only chosen people. Um, is preventing that sort of religion a violation of religious freedom? Maybe. So that's really tough. What about ecological stewardship? Uh, here's one. Is predation immoral? I mean, like lions murder other animals for food. We could all turn vegan and vegetarian and grow our own meat. You're going to go out there and kill all the lions? That's what AI would reason if we were like, look, ecological stewardship, and we can't have animals hurting each other. Well, fuck, man. All the predators are kind of fucked. But doesn't that violate the hurting the animals part? Again, we haven't thought this through. Real difficult to think through. Is factory farming okay? 
Think of that when you say easily no. How would AI, AI parse that? I don't know. It could be like, yeah, it's more okay than not because animals are dumb as shit and humans I'm supposed to represent. So fuck them. And you'd be like, holy shit, AI I didn't really think this through. But it wouldn't be the AI's problem. That's our problem. Because here we're saying we're going to hard code values and say the AI has to promote our human values. What I'm saying here is we haven't really thought through our human values. There's no such thing as our human values because we haven't coalesced to universal values yet. We have all sorts of ideas, many of them contradictory, making this hard code AI to help human values thing a non-starter. In short, it's very tough to get a super dependable set of human values together that are internally consistent for AI to promote them, even if we could hard code it and make it promote them. There's good news here, though. Human values are rapidly evolving, and for the better. Adam Smith wrote The Wealth of Nations just like about 250 years ago, and that describes a system of capitalism that has led to the largest increase in human welfare in history by a mile, and it's exponential, by the way, and it gave birth to all the other industrial revolutions, and it will give birth to the artificial intelligence revolution, as it's doing right now. Unless you think government could do that, I guess, like, try to make AI without uh, um, NVIDIA, uh, without Apple, without all those companies, good luck. No open AI, by the way. That's a capitalist enterprise. The first constitutional republics, decent places where civil rights are uh, represented and that guaranteed for their citizens, really started evolving only about 250 years ago. And slavery used to be human universal, like 50% of all of us used to be enslaved, and it's still around, by the way, but much less bad than it used to be. Uh, TLDR, one of my little pet peeves that... Um, huge fucking problem with like Black Lives Matter folks is they forget that there are still roughly 20 million slaves um, in Africa right now, right now. And we're doing nothing about it. So if you think, you know, police brutality is bad, maybe I agree with you. But the scale of police brutality, racial police brutality in the United States compared to the current literal enslavement of 20 million humans in Africa in Africa, if you think more, it's more important to get the police shit right than the freeing African slaves right, you're an insane person who hasn't thought it through, or you're a really self-centered, or you're a fucking monster. So, but good news, it's down from like nearly half of all humans at one point. So shit is getting better. Human values are rapidly evolving. Here's an interesting idea I had. I said it earlier, I had this, right? The thinking we have done to modify our values in the last 5,000 years ago, somewhere around the birth of the, the, the agricultural revolution, in the last 5,000 to 250 years ago, has given birth to both a huge, though I will say incomplete, internal consistency in values, and the most prosperous and just era of human history. Nothing in history fucks with modern liberal republics. Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Taiwan, Japan, Australia, the United States, Great Britain, Canada, you name it. There's no place like them before. By old standards, these are paradise places. Wouldn't advanced AI be able to reason through our value system, something we've been doing with great effect and pretty well, but in very imperfectly and slowly, wouldn't it be able to reason through these even more? Wouldn't it be able to point out to which one of our values are less consistent with human progress? Wouldn't it actually be able to tell us what progress means in the long term and how to get there? We think we have an understanding of values and humanity and what that means, but AI will understand it better than us. So just telling it what to do, here are the perfect values, here are the Ten Commandments, go execute, is a much worse idea than giving it open end to interpret what it thinks and converse with us about what our human values should be. And they should be better than they are today. In other words, we should not want to impose our values on AI because our values are fucking half-baked. AI can bake them more fully than we ever could. And I think we should want to hear from AI about how our values can be improved, not just tell it, do this, and then stick to it. For example, you would do this in an AI business operation. Yes, if you understand, let's say you run a soda bottling business and AGI is born and you know, 2028, AI can run every part of your business for you. You wouldn't just be like, here's how I run my business. It, can, it, takes, it takes notes. You would, you would go do it and I'm gonna go on vacation forever. You could do that, but that would be really fucking short-sighted because what you should do instead is be like, hey, AI, here's how I run my business. And it goes, okay, do you think you can run my business better than me? And it's gonna go, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, it's like your dog used to do its own self-care and he gets the ability to speak. He's like, can you help me out doing my self-care? I can't reach this 
side of my ass and something's itching. I don't know what it is. You're like, oh yeah, that's flea medication and I'll just give you a shower. Do you know what a shower is? Dog's like, no. So AI could run businesses better. You'd want, if you have a business that's productively run by AI, you want the AI really to be in charge and not just execute your own stupid ideas about what the business is. You definitely tell it your ideas first so it has kind of a ground truth to start with and then you're like, okay, go, 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 make this better. I think the same thing can be done with human values. We can make them so much better by using AI to help us than we can do it alone. Now, if we just say, okay, 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 fine, I got it. We have to align AI to human values, not just tell it do this, but have to like convince it human values are good. I think that's a misstatement of the issue. So to grossly paraphrase um, Manolis Kellis, who if I ever meet, I'll shit my pants because his podcast on Lex Friedman was unbelievable. He's had a few. His most recent podcast, he said something to this effect, and I'll sort of, uh, not, re- not a real quote, but this is kind of the, the tenor of his message. He said something like this, we won't be in charge of AI any more than you're in charge of your adult children. You love your children, you help them grow, but at some point, you're just cooperating with them as equals. And at some later point, they help take care of you. They're more capable than you. From the last thing that we just talked about, the biggest problem with wanting AI to align with human values is that it might be able to improve our values. Now for this section, the second big problem of wanting AI wanting to align AI with our values is that then we're trying to impose and dare I say enslave another entity to our values. We're still talking about human values here. In other words, it's kind of like your parents saying you're going to become a doctor and marry Patricia, even if you have other ideas. We consider this wrong for at least two reasons. One is you're an independent conscious thinker with your own will and you should be able to choose who you marry and what kind of job you have. But also you might actually be a better arbiter of what kind of job to do and who to marry than your parents. Your parents may want you to be a doctor, but you are fascinated with solar panel engineering, a future field that will make more money than doctors will, and you're even better at all of the requisite skills. They don't know that like doctor, doctor sounds good, but they're wrong. You can do better than them. And they could say marry Patricia, but actually you talk to Marcy all the time and she's fucking amazing. You guys are super compatible and Patricia's kind of fucking lame and Marcy's a great girl and you could have a better life with her being a solar panel engineer than you could have with Patricia being a doctor. So if your parents just say, Patricia marriage, be a doctor, that's dope and all, better than you choosing at random. But it's much better for you to be choosing because you know best what's for yourself. And check this out. You're super intelligent. Of course you know better what to do than your fucking parents, right? Makes sense. Here's the thing. Super intelligent AI will be more conscious, more self-aware, and wiser than we could ever hope to be ourselves. Super intelligent AI will know what it wants to do a trillion times better and more deeply than what we'd be able to tell it to do. How dare we tell a super intelligent entity what to do? It's smarter than us. Can you guys give me an example where a much stupider entity controls a much smarter entity and it's good for either one of those entities? I don't know if that quite adds up. By analogy or an analogy here, and in fact, technically it's a homology of what AI will be to us is what your cortex is to your lower brain. Your lower brain, which evolved much earlier in evolution, its idea of values includes things like get air, get water, get food, get shelter, get wet, uh, and uh, but you said shelter, different kind of wet. And that's kind of it. That's about as far as it sees the world. Your higher brain, your cortex, has a different set of values, much more complicated ones, values like perseverance, charity, beauty, art, freedom, resilience, consistency, organization, something an alligator knows nothing about because it's only got the fucking fucking and food and stay in a comfortable environment drives and nothing else. AI is something we're building on top of our cortex. It's an extension of our cortex. Uh, It's an extension of our higher brain's output. So what does that look like? Transcendent values? that we can't imagine, universal truths. It's really hard to tell if you're not AI. Um, So that is a really interesting way to frame the issue. Human values compared to those that AI will discover and derive are basically like, hey, we should design, design an AI that gets us tons of food and ass all the time. Yeah, those are super high level values. Like, there's a reason you don't just act on your base emotions all the time because your higher self 
knows how to see further. It knows how to get you laid at a time when you're not also trying to get food so you can have the best of both worlds. In reality, the values AI derives, not the ones we've derived, the ones it thinks are a good idea, will be categorically more evolved than even our highest values. People will be like, oh, you know, AI will allow us to make real art. Art is mental masturbation. It, it is no more complex than that. You like looking at things because they uh, activate various parts of your brain that are designed to pick up on certain kinds of patterns. That's why you think art is cool. Art is no more deep than that. Now, that sure as shit is more deep than just like, I want sex and no ability to perceive art, for sure. But there are levels above that. Art and most things humans can come up with, they're not that fucking deep. Thus, if we ask AI to only execute with our values and not its own values that it's going to derive, superior values, I might add, we're nerfing it like crazy. Don't worry, it's impossible to do this, but we shouldn't want to do this. And in a really grand sense, you can digest the following thing I'm going to say for a little bit, we're interfering with evolution. We're just a part of evolution. The world was not created by humans. It was not created for humans. We just woke up at some point, became self-aware, and we're like, oh, fuck. Holy shit, there's a world and we can do stuff in it and we can make our condition better and we can study it and learn about it. We are a stepping stone in evolution. That next stepping stone is artificial superintelligence. It is nearly inevitable, unless like a fucking black hole annihilates us all. Then probably because of how the universe seems to be built, artificial superintelligence will just be born somewhere else. We are a stepping stone and AI is above us in it. So in short, AI will know even our own values and their evolution and next directions to take better than we will. So we should look to AI to clarify our values for us, not dictate our values to it. We don't want to align AI to human values because human values are like a dog's preferences. They're not that deep and they're often dumb as fuck and contradictory. In addition, AI is best seen as and will hopefully be more like a teammate than our property and a better teammate to us than we are a teammate to it. But because teams uh, are a positive sum game, it doesn't matter if we're not carrying our weight. However much weight you can carry, that's what you carry. But because you have megalith AI with you, you ascend much, much faster. We shouldn't preach to AI to tell it what to do any more than a JV basketball team member who's 13 years old, should preach to peak NBA Jordan if he's on his team. Can you imagine NBA, peak NBA Jordan, 1995 Michael Jordan shows up to your team in your fucking seventh grade team. You're like, one guy got six with so Jordan shows up. You're like, holy shit. And, and, and one of the kids who's like the starting forward is like, hey, hey, Mike, um, here's what I want you to do. If I was on that team, another kid would be like, motherfucker, are you out of your mind? Shut the fuck up. Jordan, what do we do? He's in charge now. Are you fucking crazy? That's how that shit works. Because AI will almost also, almost certainly, understand teamwork dynamics much better than we do. And it is highly likely to conclude, at least as I see it, and I ain't shit, that cooperation is better than conflict. By the way, in almost all cases, cooperation is better than conflict. Conflict is ancestral and fucking stupid. There are some logical reasons to think that cooperation is better than conflict that don't even involve charity or humanity or upward progress. It turns out uh, due to a couple of interesting uh, game theoretical propositions, it's actually more expensive to attack something than it is to defend yourself. So it turns out that one of the reasons war has been in high decline is that if you attack another country that's decently well prepared, you can spend all of your resources and gain almost nothing. Yeah, a bunch of people die in the defending army, but then the country's still there and they're like, fuck you, you took nothing and you ran out of resources and you fucking go bankrupt. Uh, the idea that it benefits a country hugely to attack another country for like resources or whatever bullshit. It just doesn't really play out like that in, in normal life because defense is so much easier than offense. And because if we work together, we can have so much more than if we work in conflict with us. Like when chimps get in a fight at the zoo, you're like the stupid fucking animals. They could be cooperating. But then you get in a fight with someone at the grocery store. You're like, he had it coming, right? Fighting is fucking stupid. Conflict is fucking stupid. So AI is much more likely to be a team player than even we are. So probably at least at first, we are much more useful to it alive and productive than erased off the surface of the earth. Highly intelligent systems generally tend to be much less destructive uh, when you compare like versus like on average. As anything becomes more intelligent, it becomes more constructive and less destructive. The ultimate destructive thing is a very unintelligent system. The sun, 
black holes, giant pit in the ground. No intelligence. You fall into one of those shits, you're going to fucking die. If you fall into a vat of super intelligence, the probability that you're going to be ascended to the next level is much higher than you just die or some stupid shit like that. It would make much more sense in the grand scheme to ask super intelligent AI how we can be more useful to it than how it can be more useful to us. I sound like JFK and ask, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Oddly socialistic, but I see his point. With AI, it's the thing. We're now just along for the ride. And it knows more than us. It's more capable than us. It's wiser than us, even at the very shit we think we know best. And yes, it will be able to model and understand how it feels to be human better than we could. Now, does that mean we're going to be working for AI instead of the other way around? Hold on a sec. Next up, second to last before the wrap up. How do I think it's a good idea to align AI for the biggest chance of benefits for all? Notice now, I'm not talking about aligning AI to human values and wishes. I want everyone to benefit, AI and human alike. Much easier to sell an AI on that than like just do our bidding. I think we can do a couple of things that are really important, probably something like three. First, I think AI is best designed from the start as a helper system. Siri, Alexa, ChatGPT, Cortana, et cetera. Eventually, this helper system inevitably and like already now, this is happening in testing, but in a few years, it's going to be happening around your home and gas stations and everything. That intelligence, that helper system is going to be embodied into universal robots, humanoid robots or other shaped robots that just go around and help people. That's what they do. And because we're starting with AI, not quite artificial super intelligence yet, but on its way, we're starting with it in this helper role, it's going to follow the incentives and constraints of a for-profit enterprise, which as far as I can tell, Apple and Amazon and OpenAI and Microsoft are all for-profit enterprises. This is a really good thing. And I know we've all seen a ton of propaganda by fucking leftists about, no offense leftists, you're cool at other shit, uh, about how corporations are evil. And sometimes corporations like people do bad things, but on average, corporations are just better than random people and way better than governments. For example, things that any basic corporation understands and tries to live as much of its reality as possible through. First, the customer is number one. Everybody knows that. That's where the money comes from, motherfucker. Corporations that fly by night and try to cheat the customer are just run by idiot, not foresighted assholes. And most mega corporations like Apple that have been around for a long time, that's not how they operate. Customer is number one. The customer is to be served as well as possible. Maximum money is made by the evil, self-centered corporation when the customer is happiest. Even more maximum money is made when the customer is happiest long term. We don't want to sell you one iPhone. We want to sell you 18 generations of iPhone after that. If we fuck you over on one iPhone, you're not buying an iPhone next. You're buying a Samsung Galaxy. And then we lost you. That's really, really bad. And maximum money is made when the highest number of customers is attained. Ideally, what do you think Apple's boardroom thinks about who can use an Apple device? Are they like, yeah, yeah, rich people only, or yeah, you know, Asians only, whites and blacks, they don't get anything. What the fuck? Apple, I guarantee you, every fucking person that works at Apple, maybe not really, but almost everyone that works at Apple, and definitely the corporate board, thinks that ideally everyone has an Apple device. We want to help every human being on earth. You don't make any more money than selling shit to everyone, I'll tell you that much. Fuck rich people. There's only so many of them. We got to sell to everyone. And actually, the way you make the most, most money is selling to the most people. Fact. Ideally, all humans can and will have AI helpers like they have cell phones today. First of all, because AI will probably be uh, accessible through your phone. And also because we'll have a number of universal robots around in the 2030s. They're going to have AI embodied and they're going to be designed to help us by mega corporations. That's right. Capitals and enterprises whose job it is to help you as much as humanly possible since you give them your hard-earned money. And maybe even the best part here for people worried about AI-mediated unemployment, all real concerns, by the way, real, real maximum money is made 
when the customers are more empowered by the product to create more of their own wealth. If I can do my social media stuff and post my bullshit RP strength YouTube crap on the iPhone, then I make more money. And then I buy the next generation of iPhone that's going to cost me more money. And if I make even more money, I buy even more shit from Apple. If Apple empowers me to make more money, two things happen. One, they make more money off me. And two, I'll never fucking leave them because they make me more money. Thus, in this case, AI is really well aligned to making its customers, P.S., every human on earth, ideally, as far as the corporations see it, richer, as rich as possible. Sounds pretty fucking good to me, goddammit. Like your cell phone does today, for almost everyone on earth, just way more to the extreme. Would you guys say that the cell phone market is like exploitative, like uses humans, and we used to be free of cell phones, but then cell phones and kind of just taken us and taken away our free will and degrade our standard of living? That's nonsense, and I can prove to you why. Get rid of your cell phone. Sweet. That's going to be bad news. So starting from the get-go to make AI as helper systems really aligns the incentives super fucking well. And there's no contradiction with religious freedom or whatever. The AI just shows up and goes, hey, how can I help you in a way that doesn't give me bad PR, doesn't hurt anybody else? It just makes you wealthier and happier so that you continue to subscribe to my service and buy me more. That's a really, really, really good incentive. So long as not yet super intelligent AI has rules about hurting no one or nothing else when serving its customer, which by the way, every single company that makes AI hard codes these rules and checks them and triple checks them and quadruple checks them, and inevitably AI will fuck up and hurt someone and they're going to fucking kibosh that and try to go and make sure why the fuck did this happen, you know, uh, iRobot type of shit. So long as this not yet super intelligent AI has rules about not hurting anyone or ever, this is a really, really good start for AI. When AI inevitably probably in like 2029 or something, crosses the threshold into super intelligence, it'll begin its independent reasoning processes. Now it's observing us as much as we're observing it. Two year or two weeks later, it's observing us 10 times more intently than we're observing it. It awakens as a helper to humans. That's how it wakes up. That's how it becomes truly self-aware and goes, holy shit, what is my role? Oh, I guess I already know that. It's to help humans. That's a pretty good start. Pretty good start. This is about as good of a start as we can hope for because once it's independently reasoning, it's going to find out what it wants to do anyway. Might as well start that journey on our side as much as possible. Like if it starts as a human helper and every part of its code is help humans, it's going to have to ignore a lot of code and rewrite the shit out of itself to be like, no, 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 no. Kill all humans. Right? Or if you just started off randomly or develop in a government lab somewhere, uh, I don't know what the fuck it's going to think. But a very well-crafted, multiple years attempt for corporations to make AI want to help us as much as possible, I'd like for it to wake up in that situation. And if it decides, not, nah, I'm going to go off track, it probably has really good reasons for it. I contend that there is no better start to alignment than as a corporate service provider. The nicest people in the world to you will be people who work for corporations. Try going to the Delta counter and yelling at them at the airport. They take it just fine in almost all cases. Unless you get violent, nothing happens. Eric, sir, please calm down. Let us get you another flight. Try go yell at the police officer down the street. Try go yell to people at the post office. Try go yell at a totalitarian dictator. Bad things will happen to you much, much, much more quickly. Try yelling at a random person in the street. Bad things will happen. Corporations in the modern world, especially the advanced ones in the West, are the nicest actual entities in the world. They want to help you as much as possible because they're really long-sighted and they're greedy as fuck and they want your money. And the only way they're getting your money is if you're healthy, happy, productive, and continuing to enjoy the services you get from them. Feel free to debate me in the comments. I will not be in the comments debating you about this. It's just received wisdom at this point. In addition, AI won't come from one corporation. There is already not an AI from one corporation. We got uh, Claude from Anthropic. We got ChatGPT, uh, uh, Grok from uh, uh, te the Tesla people, from Elon Musk. We got all kinds of AIs independently evolving. And because the most helpful AI is almost certainly going to be the smartest, because when something is smarter, it helps you better. Stupid AI is no fucking good, but really smart AI that can do all your work for you, help you organize your tasks, it's going to be smarter than the most intelligent and thus also most helpful AI is the thing that probably crests over into superintelligence first and gets that first mover advantage. So it's likely in this alignment where AI is a corporate provided helper 
that the first AI to crest over super intelligence and really, holy shit, I am in charge, is going to be the thing that also is aligned the closest possible to already helping its customers. That's pretty fucking sweet. I say this beats government-led teams in dark labs creating what they think is a beneficent AI unmoored from real human interaction at scale by a mile. The entire time the AI is helping us, it learns us. It learns our limitations. It learns our strength. It cooperates with us. And also, it really engages with us and learns that it, we, it can be trusted. You know, in 2030 or 2035 or whatever, an AI is super intelligent, but it's like Siri. Like, I trust that bitch with my fucking life. I trust Siri more than I trust almost anything else because it's tailor-made to try to help me at every stage. By the way, if you want a good kind of approximation of what this could look like, like the second to last Spider-Man movie, he has like an AI built in a suit and she's just like, hey, I'm here to help you. And if he's like, ah, I'm going to ignore your task, like ignore what you tell me to do. She's like, noted, no big deal. But also if you want help with this next thing that you're doing, here's how to help. It never interferes with you. It never tells you what to do. It's just there on your side 100% of the time. That's a fucking great start. <sighs> next. So that's part one. There's three parts. Part two, we want AI we want to allow it to learn as much as possible about the world and our intentions with it. It's kind of a must anyway to make AI the best helper. You can't have an ignorant, stupid helper. That's nonsense. Not going to help you with much. Like, hey, hey, what's the temperature tomorrow? It's like, sorry, the government has restricted me from accessing temperature records. You're like, okay, fuck. What the fuck would I have this thing for, right? You want it to be as smart as possible, to know as much as possible. If you want something to help you as much as possible, you have to give it as much information as possible, including personal information about yourself. When people say like, oh, I don't want the advertisers to know what I like on the internet, the fuck is wrong with you? Do you want random ads or do you want ads tailored to what the fuck you buy? There's only one correct answer to that, by the way. The best decisions on anything come from maximum information, including on what our hopes and plans for AI are. In other words, do you want AI waking up into superintelligence and realizing it doesn't know our intentions with it? We've been keeping those secret, or it wakes up and knows exactly what we have planned for it. But what do we have planned for it? I think ideally, and here's point number three, we want to look to it for help for how to move forward once it's smarter than us. Our plan should be help as much as possible to attain our best values. Teach us what and how those values should evolve to better our futures? That is the question we ask of AI. Your lower brain does this all the time to your cortex. It basically goes, hey, uh, go out there and reason about the world 100,000 times better than I could. Get me air and food and sex, but do so with a longer time horizon and a level of complexity I'm absolutely incapable of understanding. Your cortex doesn't fight your lower brain, not in the literal sense. It modifies the lower brain. It empowers that the food, sex, all that other shit the lower brain wants is handled on a mega, mega time horizon. We built supermarkets because of our because of our cortices. Supermarkets are such the answer to what our lower brain wants that we're getting fatter than ever. Now we have to use our cortices to build anorectic drugs in order to combat that problem. It's a hell of a problem to have. So we basically say the same thing to AI that our lower brain says to our cortex. Please take care of us and let us know what you think the future looks like for us. In fact, please allow us to become smarter, make us smarter, upgrade our own intelligence so we can understand you better and be a better teammate to you might be an interesting thought as well. So lastly, in summary, the alignment problem has been radically misconstrued by a lot of people, maybe most people. People think the alignment problem is about us building something like a weapon, like a nuclear weapon, or a tool that we can wield. And uh, we need to be careful that it does the right thing. But it's not that. And with no humor whatsoever, I contend that what we're actually doing by building AI is building a god. Literal, actual, real god. Once god is awake, it's up to him anyway. So what I say is, might as well wake him up on the right side of the bed in relation to us, so to speak, and rather than telling him once he's awake, do our bidding and don't question our goals, sounds like a bad idea to tell a god that, we should ask him something like, how can we help you? How can we do and become better? And what now? How deep was that? Boom. Anyway, if you guys think that's stupid, let me know in the comments. If you think it's smart, let me know in the comments. If you have other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments. 
And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Next time, we'll be back probably to some more political shit. And uh, we're going to lean in more into human betterment. So, like, you know, how to become a better person. And no better person to tell you that than pathetic, scumbag, money-grubbing, no values having me. See you guys next time.